So not only do we do the workshops, uh, we do a workshop every single day of the week, but for, for me, uh, we do the peer connect. Uh, we are able to receive the phone calls and set up appointments with these individuals when they can have long conversations with us, uh, with their needs or just, you know, to hear them out of what they're going through in a day to day. Some of them haven't even stepped outside since this all began and they're afraid to do so. But just having that, uh, that appointment with me to be able to reach them is, is important. Uh, for those individuals who are regulars, we, uh, we do do the um, weekly check-in, uh, of course, with their approval by contacting via email, phone, texting. Some of them do not want to talk and they just prefer to text. And then, of course, the walk-in services. Uh, peer staff are physically at the PRC um, through the week to help the walk-ins um, who do not have any computers, phones, or to connect uh, from home. Great, uh, thank you. Thank you, Lori. All right, Cher. Hi, everybody, thank you. And I really, um, Jason Robison here with Cher. Um, I only have one slide, I'll leave it up and I'll kind of, um, I want people to see the website for Cher, www.shareselfhelp.org where people can access over 170 self-help support groups that are meeting virtually for all kinds of life issues. Los Angeles County has 12,000 self-help support groups that deal with over 750 different life issues. No matter what somebody's going through, there's a community of people going through the same issue who meet on a regular basis in the community that, and are are an organic source of friendship and social support. And I wanna kind of reiterate on what Mark started with in terms of community inclusion being a social justice issue. It is that, it's more than that because it is almost the most important thing we can do to make sure that somebody's able to connect with and reach their goals. Right? If you look at how do people get jobs in this country, people get jobs through people they know. If everybody that you know is somebody that's getting mental health services and is dependent on benefits and is going to a clinic, they're not going to get you jobs. If you're in a self-help support group and you're in a group that meets in the community that has rotating leadership, people are coming through from all demographics. There's a, there's a saying in one self-help support group, we're a group of people who normally would not mix. And I'll give you a story about this. We have, um, you know, in times of not COVID, we have community centers that host self-help support groups and we bring the meetings that would normally meet in the community into our physical location so that we can connect people not connected to social support to all of this social support. So, there was a meeting of Codependence Anonymous, which is a 12-step program for people whose goal is healthy relationships. I don't know any human being who doesn't have the goal of having healthy relationships, right? Self-help support groups are something that we all qualify for. So two people started going to this group, and um, after about six months, they became best friends. They didn't really know each other's circumstances, and after they became best friends and they developed a sense of intimacy and they supported each other in their own recovery in developing healthy relationships, they got to know each other deeper and they got to know the context of their lives. And one of the person was homeless and slept under an overpass. And the other person was the spouse of a wealthy attorney in Beverly Hills. And after that happened, a friend of the attorney helped the person who lived in the, under the overpass get a job, right? Because that's how people get jobs. They get jobs through people they know. And one of the best things that we can do to, to increase employment is to connect people to broad social support. So when we look at what's happened with social support in the time of COVID-19, particularly self-help support groups, and I want to really emphasize this, that the peer work that we do and that we train is 
is centered around how we develop relationships of mutuality and then connect people to the organic social supports that are going to be available when we are not available. Because as professional peers, we are not available all the time. And if somebody's social support depends on me, that's not the best that we can do. So connecting them to the self-help support group is the way to broaden and deepen that social support. And it's so effective that the American uh, Division 27 of the American Psychological Association, which is called SPRA, the Society for Community Research and Action, recommended that self-help support groups be part of healthcare reform. And in their, in their statement, in their resolution, they had over 130 research articles that they cited to demonstrate the effectiveness of social support and self-help support groups. So, Social support is 40% of whether people are okay or not okay. And as COVID started happening and physical distancing went in place, it became really clear. If you notice the language around that, I think Mark was one of the individuals that probably noticed it first and started speaking up that, hey, we don't want to talk about social distancing. We want physical distancing because we want, so, we want strength of social relationships. So all these meetings that were happening in the community of people who are, you know, if you've got diabetes and you depend on your self-help support group for diabetes, you're going to find a way to make sure your diabetes self-help support group meets. If you've got cancer and you depend on your self-help support group to meet, if you've got anxiety, panic. So the, the community-based meetings transitioned automatically. I don't know of a meeting that missed a week in because they all went immediately to Zoom meetings. And so we helped meetings that were meeting at CHAIR transition to the Zoom format. We helped them get their formats online so that people could share formats and if different people came in, they could, they could still have the meeting. And what happened with that is a, a broadening of the tools of recovery for each of those fellowships. We had a, a festival of recovery a few weeks ago and there were people that joined from Ireland that had no idea that there were self-help support groups and communities of support for incest and childhood sexual abuse. Now they're connected to a community that's always available. When, like Karis's example, you know, when somebody can't fall asleep, they've got people that they can talk to now about, about what specific nightmares they're having, which is really important. So now that we're starting and that we've seen that, you've got Zoom meetings that are meeting that everybody can have access to. And you get these Zoom meetings, like we've got 155 meetings today. The meeting that I was in for one of my fellowships on Tuesday had 500 meetings or 500 participants, people all over the country. They've, they're gonna have a, a Festival of Recovery, a Founders Day, they call it, it's going to have 20,000 participants. Because they're virtual, they're able to increase the attendance and broaden the attendance. So, so these meetings that have transitioned to this, this format, now that kind of reopening is on the table, meetings are looking at how they continue to allow access to virtual participation while they meet in physical locations again. So I know at SHARE, all of our, we're looking at how we, how we transition so that we develop the technology and the best practices so that people can be physically in the room and virtually in the room, which is really, really important. And so um, the other thing that's really important that I want to say is peers, people with lived experience are essential in providing referrals to self-help support groups. It's really important that our system, and our system is not, was not designed with this knowledge. We keep learning as we go, right? Our system was not designed and was not designed with the information about how to make referrals to self-help support groups. When the referral that somebody gets is a piece of paper with a telephone number on it to a self-help support group, they go 0% of the time. But when they speak to somebody in that meeting, they go 100% of the time. 
So people with lived experience who are trained in how to do a referral to a self-help support group are a best practice. So if you're looking to connect people to social support and self-help support groups, you can call 310-305-8878 and people will talk to somebody who can use those peer-based best practices to connect people to self-help support groups, which is really essential. And I, I want to emphasize, you know, there's a, before COVID, we had an opioid epidemic in this country. And it's likely that more people will die of opioid overdoses than all the, pe all the U.S. Uh, casualties that we had in the Vietnam conflict this year. It's a, it's a big problem. And if everybody knew that there were community-based supports available for people, not only for people who are struggling with drug use, but for family members who are living with people, if everybody had you know, connections to those self-help support groups, we would be having a different conversation about the opioid epidemic. So um, thank you and uh, share self-help dot org and 310-305-8878. Thank you, Jason. Definitely uh, got me thinking. I, I started my career in uh, learning from people in, in self-help mutual aid groups. So everything I know comes from people in, in those groups. And then afterwards, I've stayed in the area. Um, so let's hear from Project Return next. I made the rookie mistake of talking while muted. So <laughs> hey everyone, um, it was so great so far to hear what everyone has to share. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into it. I might sound a little scripted because I tend to talk very, very fast. And so I took the time to really kind of set aside um, a little paragraph of how I wanna introduce, you know, what we've been doing and how we came about doing that. So um, our mission at Project Return um, is to create opportunities for connections um, that enrich and inspire um, individuals with mental illness to pursue a life without limits. So when limitations to community access and restrictions on physical distance became a priority for safety, um, we really looked to our slogan and reminded ourselves that the only way we'd be able to overcome the uncertainties of this unprecedented time uh, was by taking charge together. And so for those who do have the slides up um, and they are viewable, you'll see I took the, um, I went ahead and just kind of called and highlighted uh, this little piece of the presentation as taking charge together. Um, let me see. So, so essentially what that means to take charge together um, for us was that in the early, in early February or so, um, as things began to unfold, we immediately began collaborating with our volunteers and our members, our staff and our community leaders to prepare ourselves for a potential shutdown. Um, this meant ensuring that we had ways to, col um, to contact the majority of the people we serve and support them by offering consistency in the programs that we all were already providing them and that they loved. Um, so that also, <laughs> um, we wanted to promote the changes in our services. So we really kind of looked to the other organizations and our collaborations with the underserved cultural community meetings, um, their leaders, the um, SALT meetings, the service area leadership team meetings out here in Los Angeles County, um, the na uh, health na neighborhoods, just all of those individuals that we had contact with we kind of really look to them to really uh, promote all of our change in services. So what this change looked like was an increase in our warm line hours. And so usually we would be offering this non-crisis non platform for individuals to share um, stress or feelings of, of, of being overwhelmed or just kind of being able to process a certain circumstance in their life with a peer. Um, it, would, it would normally be conducted from 5 to 10 p.m but we shifted that to be open from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday, and we were continuously offering our um, warm, line, uh, warm line hours on Saturday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And so what we did also was we reflected that on our website, and so individuals who did not want to initially call in to our warm line, they could then fill out a form on our website um, to request a call back. And 
So we offer our warm line in English and Spanish um, to community members. We're hoping in the future we can offer more languages. Uh, but for now, just kind of really expanding upon what we already had and keeping it consistent um, has been really important. The other thing that we increased is our one-on-one -on -one support. So we were offering a lot of community groups in uh, throughout LA County. We had about 150 meeting in person. And so when everything changed, we shifted those to online groups as well as one-on-one -on -one support. And so our um, regional supporters uh, were making calls to members, to facilitators, to individuals in, that they had contact with to just make sure that they were keeping them connected. Um, our online groups um, also expanded. We were hosting our online groups um, through a platform known as Support Group Central. And we've now increased the amount of groups that we have there, as well as transition some of our in-person volunteers onto our online platform. Um, we also increased our cleaning procedures to ensure that everyone felt safe um, and felt like we were keeping up to date with the sanitary um, requirements of the county. So we, we started doing hourly cleaning of all of our tables, ensuring that all of our staff had masks and then providing individuals who did come into our office um, for one-on-one -on -one support with masks as well, so they also felt protected. Um, we also enhanced our website navigation. So when you go to our website, it's www.prpsn.org. Uh, well, www um, when you go to our website, the first thing you see in our banner is um, a banner related to COVID and for individuals that are able to, um, individuals can click that banner and be able to access some of the services and a quick kind of blurb on everything that we're offering, as well as, as I mentioned, fill out a form to request some type of support and resources. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> we also enhance our resource connection. So we look to um, an organization known as, <coughs> Gosh, I forgot their name. That's terrible. <laughs> um, but we, we, we looked to some of the um, databases that DMH had been sending out on some of the resources that are being offered in LA County relating to food banks, shelters, uh, mental health services, community services, um, help with jobs, help with unemployment. And we started connecting with those resources to ensure that we provided warm handoffs to the individuals that we were serving. So people who were calling in for specific needs um, we offered them resource information after we had already connected with that resource to ensure we knew what the process was going to look like and knew that what their standards were in terms of how they have for COVID. Um, the other resource database was One Degree. So if anyone was interested, it's One Degree. Um, our promotion and outreach has changed as well. We've been doing a lot of over the phone connection with individuals participating in some of these round tables that are taking place. Um, with community leaders to ensure that we're staying on top as well as providing our outreach information to as many platforms as possible. Um, we enhance their telehealth services. So those over the phone, those Zoom calls, those um, online support groups, just really kind of making sure that we're meeting the community where they're at. Um, so I'm wrapping it up there. Um, I just want to include our main number. It's 323-346. 0960 uh, for anyone who does want one on one support or has any questions about any of our programs, you can call our main line and we'll connect you with a staff who is ready and available um, to offer that peer support. Uh, we also have our warm line, which is 888-448-9777. Uh, again, that operates from 9am to 10pm. Um, and if you don't get an operator um, automatically, what we ask is that you leave a message um, and then we'll have someone contact you as soon as possible. If you have a preference of time that you want uh, to call in, um, you can also leave that as well. Um, actually, before I wrap this up, I also want to say that in terms of our website navigation, um, for anyone who's familiar with our um, Hacienda of Hope Respite Home um, that offers um, a temporary space for individuals who are feeling overwhelmed, stressed, and need a, essentially a break from home to be able to process some of that and ha uh, be in a space with peers who can offer support. Um, you can now go on our website and see a photo tour of some of the rooms and what our Hacienda of Hope program looks like, as well as fill out a constant contact form um, to request information so that you can um, get any of those 
those questions. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, that was terrific. So just to let everybody know where we're at, we've got uh, Indigenous uh, Circle of Wellness uh, in a moment and then Painted Brain. And then we'll be opening it up for as long as we can. Um, at the very end, we, um, you've all entered some future topics you're in, uh, interested in. So I'll put up a poll. It might be two minutes for that or whatever it is. But uh, we definitely want to make sure we hear from uh, the next two uh, organizations as well. So let me turn it over to Indigenous Circle of Wellness. Hi everyone, so my name is Elena Nori again. I'm Hopi, Cherokee, and Chicanex, and I use she, her pronouns. I serve as the co-director of education and community engagement at Indigenous Circle of uh, Wellness. And for reference, I included our website in the chat as well as our Eventbrite if you're interested in signing up for any of the upcoming events. Um, I shared this flyer here to note that our founder and CEO is Monique Castro, who is pictured at the top of this flyer. Uh, she's Dene or Navajo and Chicana. She is a licensed uh, clinical therapist and Indigenous Circle of Wellness is really um, created to serve our community in a way that is um, very holistic and culturally competent and inclusive um, and intentional. Um, and then at the bottom of the flyer, we have Melissa who serves as um, my colleague as the co-director of education and community engagement. And this was from a, a free mental health gathering that we did um, focus on unpacking the medicine wheel for community members here in LA. Next slide, please. So we've been very fortunate to collaborate with Paku Cultural Community Services, which is a nonprofit established by the San Fernandeño Tatavian Band of Mission Indians. Um, and fortunately, we've been able to host uh, virtual wellness circles. We had four planned. We recently completed the first. Um, and for each of these, we really want to unpack one quadrant of the medicine wheel. So for the first one, we focused on mental wellness and really unpack like, what does that mean to you? How is this um, relatable? How does this translate to your actions, to your day-to-day -day planning? And then how can we build community in understanding this and then um, create sense of belonging for one another. For our next session, we'll be uh, reconvening on Thursday, June 11th. And uh, one of our co-presenters is, is on the line here, Singing Bird. And, and yes, the circles are open to everyone. Um, on that Eventbrite link that I included, you can certainly sign up there. They're free. Um, you can call in, you can join via Zoom. Uh, following each event, I create a resource document that kind of summarizes what we've discussed and, and identifies the main themes of what we need um, as reminders to, to the actions that we want to take um, to maintain wellness. Next slide, please. And then following that, um, Monique had actually established virtual beating circles about a year ago. Um, I'm sorry, not virtual, they were in person before COVID-19 and uh, we had to switch to virtual beating circles. So our beating circles are facilitated by Bridget Poolscamp. She's Diné or Navajo. Um, she assembles beating kits that have supplies needed for each event. Um, and they're about $20. We recently posted our new event right that has a link to purchase these for $25, which includes shipping. Um, and that covers supplies needed for June, July, and August. And uh, really while we go through these beading circles, we're talking about uh, what it means to bead, um, how it um, connects to our positivity, our ability to pray, our ability to set intention to deal with anxiety, um, and really focus on creating something that we can gift to our loved ones. As Jason mentioned, a lot of um, these events and the impact that they create is really grounded in relationships and indigenous core values of relationships, respect, reciprocity, and redistribution of these teachings. So that's really our intention for hosting these events. Um, you're more than welcome to also sign up for this one. I checked just before I got started here and there are still beating kits available for local LA residents here. 
uh, we sold out of those that are non-local participants. We've had folks join in from Alaska, North Carolina, Canada. It's, it's really beautiful. Um, you leave each circle just feeling, you know, like reinvigorated and re-energized and feeling like this experience is not um, yours alone to carry. You know, there is a, a source of support here. Um, and so with that, feel free to, to register on Eventbrite. And then just a quick summary, Indigenous Circle of Wellness um, currently isn't accepting new clients, but we are in the process of hiring two additional licensed therapists um, as we provide individual counseling, couples, family, youth, and adolescent counseling. And then we also provide additional workshops and trainings. Um, we recently completed a community survey to find out what our community wants to see and how we can expand our services. So in response to that, we've been brainstorming new avenues and also identified later times to capture more community members. Um, but collectively, I think when we're able to be back in person, the setting is just, the energy is great. I mean, I have a toddler, all the kids are playing together. We're beating, you know, the moms are sharing snacks with one another and one another's kids. So it's really a beautiful space and I appreciate the opportunity to share with you all and hope you can join. So thank you. Thanks, Selena. Uh, next, we're going to, if I can make this, uh, there we go, Painted Brain. Hi. Um, Hi. Oh, there. Here we go. <laughs> You go first? Sorry. No, no, no. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is David Israelian. I'm the co-founder and chief technology officer of Painted Brain. Uh, back in 2009, I had the vision to drive the integration and access of technology into the mental health community and other vulnerable populations to address the digital divide, uh, wellness and productivity in recovery. I uh, created a meetup like group where peers would meet to identify strengths and weaknesses in their knowledge around technology. Uh, this helped assess where individuals were at, which would later turn into a holistic curriculum in teaching them how to build a website, do digital marketing, digital literacy, uh, and sharing their personal stories using a trauma-informed lens. Uh, and now during these trying times, uh, we're providing diverse communities with teletraining and telehealth using a train the trainer model, creating jobs through a workforce development program. Uh, I'm a subject matter expert. I proudly live with schizophrenia and OCD, um, and I hope my transparency of diagnosis can empower other peers to come forward um, and embrace their differences as a superpower rather than a kryptonite, um, rather than kryptonite. Um, uh, I'd like now to introduce you all to my partner, Rachel Chambers. Hi, and thank you, Eli, for your bravery. I'm, I'm, my name is Rachel Chambers, and I'm also a peer with lived experience. I'm proud to co-found it, a hybrid mental health technology and workforce development company that now is serving thousands of vulnerable populations like myself. Um, we see a pain to bring um, access to meaningful activities as a social justice, social equity issue, or um, to uh, bridge the digital divide. Um, to provide access to mental health resources and to provide uh, meaningful jobs for individuals. We see that as a social justice issue and it is incorporated in our mission. So with COVID-19 and in addition to the civil unrest with folks actually coming out and discussing their traumas with the generational mistreatment of African-Americans, Pain and Brain stands um, with our community and really creating community-based solutions to address some of the issues that we have been struggling with as a community. We've already, um, as Eli mentioned, had been online training folks, getting people jobs, teaching them to be, to be advocates. So this was natural to us to really get on board um, and to put our trainings online. And some of the things that I'll highlight um, is that right now, we're teaching digital technology um, training, digital literacy training for, for folks, which will empower them to use smartphones, to use laptops, um, to find free resources, to find where they can um, get free Wi-Fi, um, to really um, uh, bridge that digital divide. We're also providing work skills, um, online training for folks, 
so folks can um, get help with like OTs and MSWs and then get connected to a job. We're also partnering with um, LA County DMH and the mayor um, at his shelter sites to begin sh uh, physically distance arts empathy groups. So we will be starting next week on the front line, really wo working um, distantly with individuals who've been isolated at shelter sites in LA. And I'm really proud to be on the, uh, the front line because those are also the battlegrounds um, where a lot of the trauma is, is happening. So we really are proud to be there. Um, we're also we'll be making art kits for individuals who are isolated in COVID um, hotels and trailers. So we'll be deploying about 200 art kits just this week. And then um, to people who have not probably had human contact in months. Um, so Pain and Brain is really on the front line in social justice and, and advocacy and really empowering peers with lived experience to uh, engage in meaningful activities. That includes work and training and just uh, um, creating connections. We have a number of online support groups that you'll see. Um, we also have created a COVID-19 website that shows folks on how to get on Zoom, apps that are safe to use, to stay connected. Um, what are, um, and we really partnered uh, with credible entities to get that information. Uh, so we're really proud to be on the front line as peers, um, really addressing some of the social justice issues and addressing some of the pandemic uh, challenges that our vulnerable population is experiencing. I do wanna leave the rest of the space for us and the participants to be thought partners and the next steps and, and what we could do um, to, uh, to continue um, supporting each other and to stand connected. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you, David. Thank you, uh, Rachel. So um, as you see, uh, LA County, you have some wonderful organizations doing great things during COVID-19. Really some of the more uh, amazing things I've seen nationwide. Um, I, uh, we're ready to open it up uh, more now uh, to everybody to make some comments, put things in chat. A uh, number of people have been doing a great job putting things in chat. I'm gonna be scared to pull this together later on. There's so many things. Make sure that you send it to um, all, uh, all panelists and attendees if you want all the attendees to see it. So please go ahead and share that. And I'd be happy to have uh, my panelists, colleagues, uh, share anything that they see with interesting uh, things that, that uh, they're coming across. But now we're going to be able to open it up to folks to um, make some comments about hopefully what you're doing to promote connection and uh, meaningful participation right now. It could be in your own life, how you're supporting other people. So we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, give this a try right now for a couple of minutes. Um, Mark, uh, I have your, uh, you uh, up right now and I'm going to open up the line for you to be able to talk. Mark Carmatz. Uh, so you might need to unmute your own phone right now because I've unmuted you. All right, thank you very much. My name is Mark Carmatz. I am with Project Return Peer Support Network. And I have been turning in stuff from different places like Doors to Wellbeing, the California Association of Mental Health Peer Run Organizations, stuff like that. We are working on getting the Certified Peer Specialist Bill here in California passed. And we've, we've not been able to do that, but we are working on that. Hopefully that, we, that will be done this year. Also, I would like to suggest that there be a moment of silence for George, um, George Floyd, who passed away about a year and a half, uh, about a week and a half ago. That's about a week and a half, about, about nine or 10 days ago due to the uh, being assaulted by the police. So it is really important, I think, that there be a moment of silence in, in honor of him. So please, uh, please do that if you can. We need to honor him and, 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 and to, and to take time to thank honor him. Thank you. Yep. thank you, Mark. I, I, I think um, we had some time to reflect while you were talking and, and 
asking us to think about uh, Mr. Floyd and, and really unfortunately uh, too many incidents for too long. Absolutely. In our country. So thank you, Mark. Um, Alex, uh, Elliot, and, and Shirley, I'm going to open it up for you as well uh, and make sure you um, hit unmute on your own phone. But Alex, why don't you go ahead and go first? Um, or Shirley beat you to it, Alex, to unmute. So you can unmute your own line. Shirley, why don't you go ahead? Yes, hello. I'm Shirley Ray. I am a uh, uh, peer-to-peer supporter, the facilitator for Word Up with the San Pedro Mental Health with Gail Salser. And we meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Uh, teleconferencing on Skype. We, um, our group is, um, again, peer-to-peer -to -peer support. We listen to each other. You know, I know with the pandemic, um, a lot of people are afraid and scared to go out, but I try to encourage everyone that uh, this too shall pass. But in the meantime, it doesn't mean that we can't talk to one another. We can still network together. We can still find out how each one is feeling, how are your emotions going up or down and, and what have you experienced during your day? And just reminding people to stay safe using their mask and gloves and to wash up, you know, clean up before they, when they enter their house or apartment or wherever they live. And we just talk and laugh and chit chat and have fun that way. You know, we um, also are involved with a art expression group, which meets also on Tuesdays and Fridays from 1 to 3 p.m. And one of the facilitators, uh, Aaron Isido, he is uh, wonderful with art expression and that helps us to stay connected. It's so important for us to stay connected at this time because I know particularly like last night, I too had put on my flashlight in the Long Beach community uh, for eight, minutes and 40 some seconds to honor and pay our homage and respect to um, George Floyd. And I know being an African-American growing up in the 60s and the Rodney King um, beatings and we people just get tired of uh, the negativity, the lies. And, you know, and then um, I was telling one of the gentlemen in my word of today how, you know, it, I too have my mental conditions and issues, uh, PTSD and OCD, and I won't name them all, but <laughs> you know, I just appreciate that we can share and come together because life is what we make it. It's hard, but it's so beautiful. And there's so many good people out there. And it's about dignity and respect. And we can, we all have that. Like uh, Michael Jackson said, take a look in the mirror. You make that change. We all have to make that change to become united, to become better. That's why it's so important for all of us to go out and vote, to vote and to do what's necessary to, 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 to in healing. We must heal from this. Because I even actually had a chance from my balcony on Sunday night to see the looters, the rioters. I've never seen the National Guard in such deepness in all my life, being on earth, and a policeman, and a motorcade of policemen, and undercover cars of policemen, and a fireman running, and sirens blaring. I couldn't sleep until Monday morning because it was just trauma, you know? Um, but word up, we, we talk, we listen, we laugh, we chit chat. So it's a wonderful group on Tuesdays and Thursdays, again from 10 to 11.30 a.m. with Gail Salsa. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Shirley. And, and we certainly, um, we thought a lot about what we would do this week uh, with everything else that's going on around the country uh, that's been raised and um, 
certainly appreciate everything you were talking about and uh, Mark was talking about and the work that Word Up is doing. And um, I think we also keep in mind that, uh, and I think Painted Brain, uh, Rachelle and uh, David said it, uh, these are also social justice issues. We, we have a lot of work to do in the incomplete experiment that we have in our country. It's, it's not a finished experiment in my opinion, but it's definitely incomplete. Um, I did wanna comment uh, some folks in chat. Jean Harris wrote uh, that she's uh, checking in with people on the phone and running phone in support groups for NAMI Connections. So Jean, thank you for, um, for doing that and sharing that. And um, shoot, uh, Emily uh, Cerna uh, for, with LA County Department of Mental Health, working with the Mental Health Promoters Program. We continue to provide free educational presentations to our communities. We have shifted to offering our presentations virtually and they are available in Spanish or English countywide. If you'd like further information, feel free to contact her. I'm not gonna, I don't do a good job reading out emails, all the dots and all that, but um, look out for, uh, for Emily and she'd be happy to connect you with the community liaison. Um, so, and there's some other stuff in chat, so take a look. Uh, uh, before I, well, I'm gonna read Martha, Martha Coda. Latinos in Action, California, we have meditation, Spanish group, and conversation with friends, support group, and education workshops. So Martha, thank you for sharing that. Um, in our last couple of minutes, I just wanted to quickly uh, give the panelists uh, a couple of more opportunities. If there's anything else that you wanted to add uh, to what we've been talking about, I would like to save uh, just the last couple of minutes for uh, folks to be able to complete the poll. So um, just want to leave it up open to our panelists for just a moment while I get the poll up. Um, yeah, this is Karis, just right quick from LACDMH. First of all, I want to thank all of the panelists and um, for sharing the information and the work that they're doing and the passion with which they're doing it with. And to um, assure to all of the participants and others that you may talk to and ask them to um, uh, take a look at the recording that, um, you know, we'll see what we can do moving forward. That's the next part that Mark will get to. Um, and um, I, you know, I, I do want to say this is, this has been an extremely hard week. Um, I, it's just been an extremely hard week, I, I guess, as everybody can imagine. And I want to be clear that when we are talking about the death of George Floyd, that we call it what it is, it was murder. And I, I just, I, I'm not comfortable saying that he died or that he passed away, that I think we need to call it what it is so that we can address um, uh, the really deep seated issues that we're trying to address while we take care of our health and wellness, while we help our communities fight the fight that they have to fight while they, um, and we also have to keep them well to do that. So the things that we are all doing, I cannot thank you all enough. And I know there are a gazillion more. We are a county of 10 million people. So you know a lot of stuff is going on. I cannot thank people for um, being open and sharing so many ideas. Um, and continue to share, please, in um, chat. And hopefully we'll chat more about uh, you know, what we can do in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Karis. Um, and we'll give um, uh, folks an, an opportunity as well if they want to add things. But I want to, um, to launch this poll. Uh, basically, this is a, a, a poll um, with items about future conversations that you might or express some interest in having in California when you registered many of you, actually a, a real large number of you, um, listed some things that you're interested in, in um, in talking about possibly in a dialogue, in a conversation, hopefully kind of sort of like this. Uh, so these all come from you. Um, I tried to combine them a little bit, but I also tried to keep your original language or, or terms as well. So please take a look at these and um, uh, vote for them. I think you can see the results as well. Um, I'm just gonna let it run and, and we'll be able to see the end of it. Uh, but I think you're uh, checking all the ones that you'd be interested in hearing about in the future. Um, while you're doing this, actually panelists, I'm, I had an option of making it available to all of us to vote and I forgot to click it. So uh, we have no voice in this vote. Um, so I, I apologize for that. 
Um, so, uh, but anyway, you'll, you'll have a voice later on maybe in, in talking about it. So uh, again, want to uh, thank everybody for participating. Um, I do want to acknowledge I've got 329, 12, 29 your time. Uh, so uh, thank you for joining us. For those who want to stick on a little longer, uh, welcome to have you. Uh, and again, want to open it up for uh, any last uh, comments from panelists. I did, uh, folks are putting more stuff in um, in chat. I did see one of my uh, colleagues from the VA. I used to work in the Veterans Administration and I've lost it now. Um, but there was good stuff happening in the VA. Oh, uh, Kathy Cash at the VA in Los Angeles. We hold several video conference calls where we talk about movies, books, food, and whatever is on the mind of the veteran. Uh, I think that is exactly the kind of stuff we need to be doing. It's not just about um, mental health and substance use. It's like, what are you doing? How do we support each other? Just uh, uh, that's part of mental health. Um, so uh, thank you, Kathy, for sharing that. And uh, anybody from the panel want to add some uh, additional comments? Absolutely. Hi, this, this is Lori. <laughs> uh, and I just wanted to invite everybody that uh, today the work readiness uh, workshops uh, uh, are going to begin at one o'clock. So I'll, I'll be leaving the panel shortly but to prepare for that. But today we're going to be going over uh, the actual job interview and, and going over the ADA laws. Should you disclose any disabilities when and where it's appropriate? Also for those individuals who have been just as involved, you know, how fair chance employment, uh, you know, uh, uh, benefits them and assists them and all those organizations and, and um, that can assist uh, with ex uh, expungements and, you know, uh, all, all kinds of wonderful things. And then on Monday, we begin our new workshop with uh, healthy relationships. And not just, you know, the partner relationships, but, uh, you know, in, in your work and, you know, coworkers, uh, you know, friends, family, you know, and uh, yeah, so I just want to invite everyone to that. Awesome. Um, if anybody would like to learn more about our online training groups, you can reach out to me. Um, I put my email in the chat. Uh, I can say it now. It's really easy. David.org. And I'll put it again in case people are curious to learn more. It was so easy, David, but it got cut out, I think, with your, uh, unless I missed something. So can you say it one more time? Sure. Yeah. I, uh, we, if you guys want to learn more about our online uh, training groups, you can reach out to me, David, at PaintedBrain.org. Uh, that's uh, David at PaintedBrain.org. Uh, thank you, Karis, for having us and thank you for holding this. Thank you both. Thank you, Mark and Karis. All right, terrific. So uh, thank you, everybody. Um, we, I'll leave the, uh, the poll open for another uh, 40 minutes, 40 seconds, I mean, while you log out. And uh, it's great to see everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. It's been great to hear about your programs and everything. So, bye. Bye. Uh, thank you, Mark. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone.